This is our place, come on in. Our place, so glad you're here. Our place, everybody's welcome. We see God on every face. Love lives here in this place. Welcome to our place, our sweet place. Welcome everyone to the Center for Spiritual Living Boulder Valley. I'm Reverend Jody Hill Stevenson and I am so grateful you're here with us today. Today is the last Sunday of 2021, and so many people have gone, oh my God, what a year. Um, and it has been a what a year, and it has been a year because it's been the year of God. It's been the year where we've practiced living and moving and having our being in the spirit of the divine. It's a practice for all of us. Sometimes we're brilliant, sometimes we're not so brilliant. We teach the science of mind philosophy here, which honors all pathways to God. And it helps people discover and deepen a personal relationship with the divine, i.e. a peaceful mind and a joyful heart. When God is the focus of our spirituality, when the divine is what we focus on in order to co-create our lives, then everything falls into place. And sometimes it feels hard, but it's all perfect. We're happier. We do more good for others. We're better stewards, stewards of the earth. And we bring peace and harmony and hope and creativity to the planet. So I'm so glad that you're here with us today. I wanted to read to you. If you don't have this book, I can't recommend it enough for your daily spiritual practice. 365 Science of Mind. It's, um, it's really a beautiful mm, gathering of Dr. Ernest Holmes' wisdom. He writes for December 31st, a prayer for world peace. I know there is but one mind, which is the mind of God, in which all people live and move and have their being. I know there is a divine pattern of humanity and we need to remember this right now and within this pattern there is an infinite harmony and peace cooperation unity and mutual helpfulness i know that the mind of humankind being one with the mind of god shall discover the method the way and the means best fitted to permit the flow of the divine love between individuals and nations. So grab your cup of coffee, your tea, a few snacks, and come on into our wonderful service. We are here to love and support you. Thanks for being here today. Good morning and welcome. My name is Jim Babcock. I'm the practitioner of the day. Please join me in reciting our big, hairy, audacious goal our BHAG. We ref reflect the divine through the teaching of the science of mind principles of success as we co-create an inclusive, inspiring global online ministry. That's who we are. And if you look over my shoulder, you see a candle lit here in the background. That represents the light within you, within me, within everyone around the world. And it's an opportunity for each one of us to look for that light wherever we're at. Today, I have a few readings, very short, to help spark you for today's lesson. The first one is by Alan Watts. To have faith is to trust yourself to the water. When you swim, you don't grab hold of the water because if you do, you will sink and drown. Instead, you relax and float. Next. Life is a mirror and will reflect back to the thinker what he thinks into it. Ernest Holmes. As we let our light shine, 
we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we liberate, as we are liberated from our fear, our presence actually liberates others. Marianne Williamson. And finally, from within or from behind, a light shines through us upon things and makes us aware that we are nothing, but the light is all. So if you would like to take a moment and just close your eyes, I'll read today's information a couple times and we'll just let it sink in into the silence. As I look back on this past year, I give thanks for all the good I welcomed. I forgive myself for all the mistakes I made and I forge forward with harmony and love for the one in the mirror. As I look back, on this year, I give thanks for all the good I welcomed. I forgive myself for all the mistakes I made and I forge forward with harmony and love for the one in the mirror. pray. Today, we pause, we reflect, we remember all that has come before us, and we stand still in the present, in the now, and we see clearly all that is around us, and we might even catch a glimpse of what is in front of us. But all of these things, no matter where they happen to be, are part of the divine, part of God, Spirit Almighty, present in every way possible, open at the top, creating new possibilities at each and every moment. I know that this truth, this God essence, is how we are connected 
how we are able to communicate and be with each other in such a powerful, beautiful way. And as we let go of the past and move forward into our next being, our next way of opening ourselves up, God is walking with us hand in hand, step by step, creating new and exciting possibilities. We allow our hearts to open. We breathe in deeply and we feel the vibration of the Almighty flowing through us as we shine ourselves on this planet, connecting with each and every person. I know today for the Center for Spiritual Living in Boulder Valley, that we are ready, ready to move forward, ready to open a new doorway, ready for the prosperous and abundant life that we have called forth. We know that it is no longer in the future. It is now. And I know this is true for each one of us. I know that this congregation is healthy, we are wealthy, we are wise, we are able to be exactly who we are, for we know that we are powerful and that each and every breath we take, each and every thought we have helps everyone around us. For we let the infinite shine through us and there's nothing better in the world than to be at one with God. So I just let this go. I just let it fly free in the universe. And I say thank you for the gratitude that I have is overflowing. It has filled me up and is moving on beyond my bounds, connecting me to each one of you. And I just let that gratitude pulsate through my body. And I feel lifted. I feel loved. And I just say, thank you, God. And together we say, and so it is. Sometimes I forget where I come from. Sometimes I forget where I'm going to. Yeah. Sometimes I feel so confused I lose my way. Sometimes I know you feel the same.
Sometimes I forget to pray to be still and know. Sometimes I don't say the word help, I gotta say that word. I can't forgive myself, I've just got to forgive myself. Call out to spirit and spirit will be heard. I remember there is no place God is not. And there is no place that God is not. And there is no place God is not. God, you better. There's no place that God is not. And I remember all that I've got. So, this is the last Sunday of 2021, like I said earlier. Wow, that is amazing to me. And by midnight of December 31st, you and I will have spent 525,949.2 minutes in the year of 2021. And the thing about minutes is that once we spend them, they're gone. And we have a choice as how we spend those minutes. We also will have thought over 25 million thoughts in the year of 2021. And we will have breathed approximately 7 million times <laughs> since December 31st, 2020. How does that happen? Seriously, how does life happen? What a miracle that we're able to spend the minutes, think the thoughts, feel the feelings, and um, live life. How, how is that possible? And to think that that which gave us the ability to do this, these amazing feats in our lives, is what we call God, the divine, Allah, Brahma, the Tao, great spirit, so many different names and so many other names. It doesn't matter what the name is. It is all one source out of which you and I co-create our lives and spend our minutes and, and live the life that we are living. And it is that very undefinable thing, which is just so, uh, it's so odd that we can't define the very thing that lives and moves and has its very being in us. So wh why would we even care? Why would we stop to acknowledge how we spend our minutes, the thoughts we think, the, the breaths we take? Well. The answer to that is most people want to live a long and happy life, or at least avoid a short and miserable life. The great mystics, including Dr. Ernest Holmes, reminds us that we are not victims of circumstance. We're actually, we actually co-create the conditions in our lives by the way we think. <clears throat> and when we can overcome negative thoughts, we change the circumstances in our lives. We create minute by minute, breath by breath, either dungeons or our destiny. And the most important about this, the most important thing about all of this is that this power is everywhere present. I think that it is one of the core principles that I didn't know when I started my spiritual path, that truly God is everywhere present. It is that thing 
that lives and moves and has its very being through each of us. There is no spot in our lives where God is not. And we can use this power consciously to change our lives for the better. I am not talking theory on this one. That indeed, in our consciousness, or our lack of consciousness, if you will, we are co-creators with the divine. I think one of the greatest aspects of the science of mind philosophy is the twofold nature of the divine. And the greatest of all realization is that there is indeed an impersonal law of the universe that is creative and that this personal law also has the love aspect, which is the heartbeat of all living beings. Dr. Ernest Holmes reminds us so beautifully, love is the sole impulse for creation. And the man who does not have it, today he would say person, and the person who does not have it as the greatest incentive in his or her life has never developed the real creative instinct. No one can swing out into the universal experience of life without love for the whole universe is based on it. So what we're really talking about is karma here. And karma has a bad rap in America, in the Western world. Most people think of karma as being negative. Karma is not negative or positive. It is what the Taoists say, the what is factor. It is the law of cause and effect. Karma is a, um, it's a Sanskrit word, and it literally means action. Not good, not bad, just is. So there is how we use our thoughts and how we behave in our lives. We know that there for every action, there is a reaction. It is the universal law, which specifically states that every single action in the universe creates, produces a reaction no matter what. We're not doing that. That which that can't be defined, that lives and moves and has its very being, that is the source of our being, that is doing that for us. Every single effect within our world upon our earth has a cause, an original starting point. Ralph Waldo Emerson once wrote, once you make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. I love that. The universe conspires to make it happen. This is the very concept, you guys. I've seen this over and over and over again. And oh, how many times I have felt this in my own life. This concept that we co-create with the universe through our thinking, through our behaviors, this is the very truth that causes most people to run away as far as they can from the new thought thinking, the new thought teachings of personal power, of success principles. Some people would much rather live in victim mentality and it's so much easier sometimes. How many times over the years as I've worked on improving myself and something happens and I go, oh, I just want to go have a drink or have a cigarette or binge vomit or do whatever else I used to do. And most people would rather live in the concept of not loving their life and sometimes hating their life than do the deep work of realizing that they are masters of the moments of their life. I remember in ministerial school, I started in 1982. And uh, I remember going to one of my professors and going, you know, I, I don't like this concept because I have a lot of negative thoughts, especially about me. And I have enough to give away to everybody else on the planet. Do you think I could make an agreement with the universe that it only listens to my positive thinking? And he just looked at me. And he went, oh, honey, you have so much to learn. The exact nature of the universe 
doesn't work that way. According to the Bhagavad Gita, which is the Bible of Hinduism, only 3% of humanity fully embrace the joy and the peace of living. Only 3%. And research shows that 90% of people end up living their lives and then dying with regret. Both my parents died regretting their lives. And it had such a profound um, influence on me. And not only did I not want to regret my life as I take my last breath, I didn't want my kids to say, oh, she regretted her last, he, she regretted her life. They won't be able to say that. And the number one regret of people who are on their deathbeds is they wish they had lived a life that was true to themselves and not the life that others expected of them. Let me say that one again. The number one regret of people who are in, on their deathbeds is that they wish they had lived a life that was true to themselves and not the life that others expected of them. So I have come to believe, and I'm absolutely right on this. <laughs> and of course, I love being right. That the path of spirituality is the path of authenticity. As the modern day sage Thich Nhat Hanh tells us, to be beautiful means to be yourself. You don't need to be accepted by others. You need to accept yourself. Sometimes that's not easy, but most of the time it takes a daily spiritual practice where we manage our thinking, we do our affirmations, we visualize, we use all the tools that we teach in the science of mind philosophy. I just want to talk a little bit about affirmations. Over the years, I've heard people go, eh, affirmations don't work for me. I go, well, yes, I hear that. I hear that. But an affirmation is a thought you are thinking, whether it's negative or positive. An affirmation is a thought you are thinking, whether it's negative or positive. We think a thought, we write it down. So whether we want to embrace the, the principle or the practice, if you will, of affirmations, please know that every thought you're thinking is a, is a creative flow and affirmation. So in a few days, a couple of days, five days, we're going to complete the year 2021. What are we going to think about it? What are we going to think about? And please, I do, I, I invite you not to think of 2021 in good, bad, right, wrong, black, white thinking. Because what happened in 2021 was is a what is, and we all created it together. So let's own it, let's celebrate it, and let's love it. So on that note, I have a few pondering questions for you as we roll up, wrap up, and put into our past 2021. The first question I have about your 2021, you can get a, uh, you might want to get some a pen and a piece of paper. The first one is, what was the most memorable event of 2021 for you? What what opened up your heart, what, what expanded your mind, what was the most memorable experience that you will hold in your heart forever in 2021 that you created, at least co-created? Number two, what was the smartest decision you made in 2021? What was the smartest decision you made in 2021? As many of you know, I am an animal lover. Um, uh, we contribute as often as we can to animal abuse organizations that uh, 
work so hard with these animals. And as many of you know, I lost my Dewey last December 11th, which was, oh, such a hard day. So interesting. I In my work in the last 35 years, I've done a lot of hospice work. But when my animals go, oh, God, I'm a mess. Anyway, so December 11th, we put Dewey down. In March, the smartest decision we made was to invite Lucy into our lives. And she's right down here sleeping. So I'm not going to wake her up. Many of you have seen her and know her. She's a, she's the love of our lives. Number three, for what reason will you most celebrate 2021? For what reason will you most celebrate 2021? And number four, those of us in New Thought don't want to go here, but we're going to go here. Did you make any mistakes in 2021? God, I hope so. I hope you made big mistakes. And if you did, what were they? And the biggest mistake that we make, because we all make mistakes, is that we don't learn from them. So it's okay that you made mistakes. You're a human being. It's okay. We're all supposed to make mistakes. And one of the reasons we have our spiritual community here at the Center for Spiritual um, Living Boulder Valley is that we can support each other in moving through and getting the learning of our mistakes. It's so important to have community. Number five, what was the biggest surprise for you in 2021? What was your biggest surprise? You went, oh my God, wow, I had no idea. Wow, that was really creative, really creative of the divine. Number six, again, people don't want to go here. And the answer to this question is not none. Stay with me on this. Number six, what regrets do you have from 2021? For me, I regret that I didn't hire a trainer sooner and start working out sooner. Now I am, and oh my God, is my body sore. So um, it doesn't have to be a big thing. What, what is it that, gosh, you know, I wish I had done that earlier. I wish I had done this, or what is it that you want? to change and learn from your regrets. And the last question is, is there anything you need to do or say to complete with 2021? Is there anything you need to do or say to complete with 2021? And completing with 2021 is exactly what we want to do. The only way to fully, completely experience the presence of the divine is to bring our full attention to this very sacred moment, to leave the past behind us, to let it go. 2021 belongs on our past timeline. We can't go back and take some of those minutes and go, oh, I'm going to spend those differently because that's what we do. We spend minutes, 1,440 minutes every single day. And we get to choose how to do that. So what, how, when are we going to decide to put 2021 in our past? The Dalai Lama, when asked what surprised him most about humanity, I love this, please listen carefully. When asked what surprises him the most about humanity, answered, Man, man, because he sacrifices his health in order to make money. 
Then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. And then he is so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present. The result being that he does not live in the present or the future. He lives as if he's never going to die and then dies having never really lived. And then dies having never really lived. The most precious thing we have is our lives. So the invitation here as we wrap up 2021 is to complete with it, to give deep, deep, deep mindful thanks for every single breath we took, for every single minute we spent, for every thought we thunked. I don't know if that's a word, but it works. In the past, we thunk. Every hug we gave, every act of kindness and compassion we offered, every sad or angry moment we had, and the list goes on and on and on and on. The divine has your back. The divine has my back. The divine is the very thing that pushes us forward and waits for us to arrive. Over the years, as I have moved through my evolution, I believe the most important concept and truth, universal truth that I have embraced is that the divine is everywhere present in me, in you, in all living beings, in the one, seven, excuse me, seven trillion species on this planet. As Thich Nhat Hanh once wrote, we are all the leaves of one tree. We are the waves of one sea. So we are about to begin a new year. Next week, I will be talking about the new year. I'll be asking you some questions. And another opportunity to co-create with the divine consciously and compassionately. And we're going to keep doing this year after year after year, month after month after month, day after day after day, minute after minute after minute, until we decide to cross over to the spirit world. It's just the nature of life. Let us commit to breathing consciously to develop a respectful relationship with time and own the power of our own thoughts. Next week, we will honor and welcome 2022 with hope and healing. So let's take some time and go inside. I love praying with all of you. It's the one thing I most miss that we aren't together every week, but we are together in soul and computer knowledge. That's good. So let's just take a moment and go inside. Sit back, close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. And in this very, very sacred moment that we are sharing together, we give thanks. We give thanks that we are each individualized expressions of the one, of the divine. And we give thanks for who we are as unique, wonderful, creative, love-filled expressions. We give thanks that that which is living and moving and having its very being through each of us is the very thing that nudges us forward. It nudges us forward as we say yes to doing our share in uplifting the consciousness of humanity, of giving to our brothers and sisters, whether they have two legs, four legs, they fly, they swim, they sit there as beautiful mountains. We commit to doing our share in uplifting and taking care of the wonderful expressions of life. And we give thanks for absolutely 
everything that happened in 2021. We also acknowledge that sometimes it is difficult to give thanks. And what a sacred time, those of us who are in science of mind, part of the Centers for Spiritual Living, and mostly here at the Center for Spiritual Living Boulder Valley, come together to care and to share and to co-create. We give thanks for everything that's happened in 2021 through the Center for Spiritual Living Boulder Valley. The generosities, the times that we've shared, the picnics, the events, the many online services, checking in with each other, going to each other's homes, taking food to those in need, loving, caring, praying, affirming, all of it. And so it is that we give thanks for the privilege of being alive on this side of the equation. We give thanks for the beautiful blue sky, sometimes cloudy. We give thanks for the mountains that so bless us here in Colorado and the sea that blesses people on the ocean side. We give thanks for every single church, synagogue, temple, mosque, sacred place, sacred circles, vortexes, holy places, we give thanks. And so we wrap up 2021, we put it back on our timeline and we look forward with hope, with clarity, with expectation, and mostly with gratitude. And so we give thanks for this very day together. And together we say, and so it is. I love you all. Happy New Year's. Have a great time celebrating the new year in, and um, we'll see you next year. Wow. See you next year. Bye now. Everybody's been through hard times Some really hard, hard times And I've heard some people say It's always gonna be this way Well, I believe this too shall pass And if you want to, you can even make a change. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take a whole wide world to make life better. It doesn't take a whole wide world. If you want to make a change, start with an attitude of gratitude. See yourself clearer in the mirror Then step by step, minute by minute Put your heart and soul and all you love it in me You're gonna see a change It doesn't take a whole wide world mm, To make life just a little sweeter wide world if you want to see a change just hang on and just be strong remember God is with you step by step minute by minute put your heart and your soul and your love right in and then get ready here is the change 
choose love It's what the world responds to Choose joy It's in a song or in a smile Choose hope It's what we can all hang on to Step by step Minute by minute Put your heart so you love right in it and then you'll see it change one more time it doesn't take a whole wide world in that right to make life a little better a lot better it doesn't take a whole wide world if you want to make a change just takes you Seeing ourselves clearer in the mirror Step by step, minute by minute Put your heart and your soul and love right in it And then see a change And then you're gonna see a change So now is our time for our offering. <clears throat> and I remember so many years of standing on the stage and watching people get money out of their pockets and their purses and their wallets and, and writing checks. And uh, it was really a beautiful sight for so many years because people were supporting the community that they were involved with. And that's what we're doing here today. The Center for Spiritual Living Boulder Valley is indeed a spiritual community, and we honor all pathways to God, and we practice the science of mind philosophy, and we help people discover their personal relationship with the divine. That's why we exist, to inspire people to wake up to their very own divinity, when God is the source of our spirituality, then other lives, then other areas in our lives just fall into place. And that's why we exist. So on this last Sunday of 2021, I ask you to go to your wallets, um, dig deep in your purse, go to your pocket, go online. There's so many different ways of doing this now. And give generously. Let's just give generously to the Center for Spiritual Living Boulder Valley. We have a very rich and creative year ahead of us. So please put your energy to your heart and join me in saying this perfect gift is spirit and form, circulating and blessing all that it touches and freely I give and joyously I receive. And so it is. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for supporting our organization this past year. Without you, I wouldn't be here, the board wouldn't be here, the practitioners wouldn't be here, none of us would be here. Thank you. So now is our time for announcements. <laughs> um, I always laugh with announcements because um, there, it's just, I've, I've done so many of them over the years, but I do have some very exciting announcements to tell you. Our focus for 2022 is going to be um, continuing developing the online ministry and creating events when we can all get together. It's all, um, it all depends on COVID and everything else that's happening. But in the meantime, we are going to continue connecting online at our online ministry. So I wanna share with you right now what we have we have six freebies online, Sunday morning service at 10, Mountain Time. We have the live watch party at from 11 to 11.30. And this is a time to just have fun with your spiritual tribe. And it's live, so we're all there. Um, Wednesday night, first Wednesday in January, we will be starting a program called Mystic Moments at 7 o'clock. 
uh, in our newsletter, we have sweet and simple spirituality. We have on Tuesday morning tea time and a book study. So come join us and come be with us. We also have some wonderful classes starting. Um, the first one is Money Vibes. This year, I think we all should welcome, should welcome wealth into our lives. So we're going to start out with an evening talking about Money Vibes on January 11th. And then on the 13th, 20th, and 27th, we will be offering a class called Being Taoist, Wisdom for Living a Life in Harmony. And then on February 7th, I'm very excited about this class, Mondays, the 7th, the, 4th, the 21st, the 28th, and March 7th. We skipped February 14th for obvious reasons. It's called Peace on Earth, Practical Ways to Cultivate Inner Peace. And our, our lovely friend, Reverend Kathy Mastriani is going to be teaching that class. So check us out, come on in, um, sign up for the classes, come and visit and have fun with our freebies and we'll be offering more throughout the year. So I'd like to remind you that all the practitioners are available for prayer. Our telephone numbers, emails, they're all listed on the website, which are seen on the screen right now. Please call us to celebrate your life, to help when in need. We all love to pray with you. So that's it for our service today. That's it for 2021 as we gather on Sunday mornings. Please continue to join us. And um, as we all live in the mystery, as we move into 2022, let us do so with a deep, deep sense of gratitude. Have a great week, everybody. Celebrate who you are. Celebrate everything that you have. And always give thanks all day long. I love you all. We'll see you soon. Please join me in reciting our benediction. I now walk so that whoever walks beside me dwells in the presence of God. I now listen so that whoever speaks with me knows that I hear the voice of God. Whoever places a hand in mine is limited, and whoever thinks of me is a living with God consciousness. For spirit and I are one eternally, and so it is. times, yes they are, we've all got giving on our mind, and the holidays are glad times, you know they are, let those holiday lights shine, but what happens? When the giving's done and everybody says thank you, there's a feeling left behind. People in need, I can't get them off my mind. I have a wish, I pray will come true. I wish every day. Be a holiday. Think of all the love we can share. If every day would be a holiday, all of us reaching out to show how much we care. If every day were a holiday. There's so much love can do I know the world would be better for me and you mm. Holidays
Tears are joy filled. Yes, they are. Family and friends. Holidays are glad times. You know they are. And this feeling never has to end. When the tinsel's gone and the lights go out, it's up to me and you not to forget our giving hearts. That's a perfect place to start. Never forget what love can do I wish that a every day would be a holiday think of all the love we can share if every day would be a holiday reaching out to help people and show how much we care if every day would be a holiday think of how much love can do then this world would be better